Hello everyone, Kitsuke here and welcome to this new episode of Liar. Um, last time, uh, I believe we got to check out the ball. Um, and we met Elizabeth and the king there. The king didn't seem to be to mind us, even though we had sort of a meltdown in front of him. But I guess that's, that's fine for him. Okay, well. Now we're going to meet Lyle, it seems. Um, Lyle spots me walking towards him and meets me halfway. Wow. Well, he, he looks good. Hello, Kitska. Hello. I can't hold it back. My face is probably as flushed as it can get. I've never seen him in anything but his armor and his regular clothes. He looks so handsome in the suit. So snowy white with blue accents and a silver lining on each important piece. His shoulders are adorned with silver epaulets which shine brightly in the candlelight. I like your hair. His tail is wagging furiously behind him, but I try not to make it look like I notice. My hair always looks like this. Oh, yes. So is this some sort of captain's uniform? Actually, yes. Only wear it on special occasions since it's very uncomfortable. Oh, but I'm glad you like it. Of course. You look very handsome. Oh. What? I watch his hackles raising his fur fluff out. I guess you really like that. Still, still wagging really fast. Thank you. He quickly comes down and takes a sip from his wine glass. It's a slightly, slightly bigger one, it's almost empty. So I see you've met Liz. Oh, yes. She seems nice. A lot different from how she was the other day. Well, the other day was a bit hectic. A lot has happened. Like what? Lyle throws a casual yet alert glance around the room. I'll tell you later. It's nothing too serious, trust me. Please don't tell me it was another problem in the canyon. No, nothing like that. Really, I'd rather not talk about it here. Okay, I won't say another word on the subject. I will really want to ask about it, but I also don't want to seem like a pest. This is a party. So earlier you said that you would be doing your job while you were here. Yes? What does that mean? It means I have to put the sound a bit higher than it was. He quirks his lip and thinks for a second. I'm basically here to keep guard, make sure nothing bad happens. I just have to stay alert. But you said this was uncomfortable for you to wear. How, how can you be expected to, like, protect anyone? Well then. I grab the empty wine glass from his bar and rotate it, swirling around the minuscule amount of liquid left. Shouldn't you be trying not to get drunk? I. It's not that. He clears his throat. Trust me, I'll be fine. No, you won't. You might not, but I remember the last time you were drunk. I hand the wine glass back to him. Humans are very pretty, but I think wolves are even prettier. Huh? I said that? I poke him on the nose and step behind him to get a glass off the wine table. He shakes his head a bit in disbelief and walks up behind him with a smirk. He reaches around to grab his own glass. I can feel him lean close to my ear. His hot breath blows onto the back of my neck. Trust me. Drunk or not, I'll always be there to protect you, my lord. It sends a shiver up my spine and I start to feel hot in the face. Stop teasing me. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Really? I turn around and offer him my hand. Prove it. At first it doesn't look like he knows what I'm implying. And as if on cue, he takes my hand right as the musicians prepare to play another song. 
But as we walk on to, out onto the dance floor, I notice that he looks a bit nervous. I squeeze his paw a bit and looks down at me. Are you afraid of what they'll think? Two males dancing with each other. You say it yourself. Nobody minds. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just... Well, in Liar, a wolf. The music starts and he just stands there wide-eyed. Lyle? R right. I'll lead. He grabs him by the waist and takes my hand with his other paw. I guess I knew he would be leading considering his stature. Stature. Stab. I don't want him to have to bend over me over too much though. So I adjust my arms to his weight. His height. Sorry. Wow. Okay, so that, that's what we look like. If we're definitely smaller than him. It's, it's incredible, like, the amount of, like, head fur he has, like, even chest fur, I don't, I don't I think it's still his head fur, like, the amount of it is incredible. It then starts, starts off a bit slow, with the two of us pacing slowly across the floor. It's, it's almost like a beard, in a way. Well, it doesn't start from, like, his chin, but you see what I mean. I already feel like I've had a bit too much to drink, even with just one glass. It's not a bad dancer, even considering how different our legs are. Are you comfortable? I don't know. Everyone's looking at us. I look around and notice that there are several people off to the sides who look are looking our way. Some of them have shocked expressions and some have blank faces. I see Liz standing off to the side. She has a confused look on her face, but smirks and raises her hand, a glass to us. I guess she's, fi she's figured it out. Don't worry, Lyle. But I... Lyle. I gently rest my head onto his chest as we move our feet to the rhythm of the song. It's just you and me right now. Oh. Lights above us dim, and a couple of smooth blue spotlights move around on the floor in rhythm to the music. It creates a very moody lighting, and I become entranced in the music. This is a perfect romantic situation. He doesn't respond to that last remark, though. Instead, he just holds me closer to his body. The smell of coconut invades my, invades my senses, and I become lost in his warm embers. His neck fluff is irresistibly soft. Okay, so that's n okay. That's neck fluff. Okay, I can hear his heart beating through his chest. It's a lot of <laughs> neck fluff. It's beating fast. Are you sure you're okay? I don't get your response at first. After a few seconds, he responds. Yes. Sorry, I guess I just froze up. Why is that? I ask this in an amusingly curious voice. Kitsuka, do you have feelings for me? I can now feel my heart rap beating rapidly against my ribs. His heavy clothes aren't helping either because I feel myself sweating profu profusely. Lyle. He guides me around him, similar to how I've led Liz around me earlier. Once we meet again, I come back to his front and look off to my side while they continue to dance. Lyle, I'm not sure what I feel. I see him give me an inquisitive yet concerned look from the corner of my eye. My feelings for you grow with every day that passes. I turn to face him, but I stare into his torso as I speak. But my emotions are very complex. And sometimes I don't know what I feel. I wish to be with you, no matter what people think. Our ranks do don't matter to me. Our dance turns into more of a con conversation, but he still guides me across the floor. His clothes clacking against the ground sometimes. I'm only technically a lord. I pause and look up at him. He's staring at me with anticipation. I can tell that you are eager for my answer, but I must ask you this first. Song and dance seems like it is entering its finale. What were you hoping, I would say? The waltz reaches its crescendo in its fi final drawn out note and we enter a dip. 
I glance out of the corner of my eye and notice that the other dancers are going in for a kiss. Two foxes lock lips and carry each other into a warm embrace. Is this it? Is this happening? My body lowers to the floor as he leans over me. His wind his widened eyes are staring into mine and I feel as if my gaze has gone through the soul and reflected back into my own. Close my eyes in anticipation. Nothing happens. I open my eyes and Lyle staring at me with a nervous gaze. He raises me back up and glances around the rest of the room. I'm sorry. We shouldn't have. I look around and see everyone staring at us out of the corner of their eyes. Just us. Just me and him. The room suddenly starts to feel like it's being warped. I hate people. <laughs> Official. I pick up on the distant chatter. Am I the only one who just saw that? Did that wolf just try to kiss him? No, I think it was a human. Looked like he was expecting it. I heard them talking on the dance floor. Apparently that lord has feelings for Captain Reed. Really? It's completely unheard of. I doubt he feels the same. Could you imagine? A wolf in love with a human. Here, in Liar. No, that's impossible. My mind is spinning right now. Th thousands of thoughts run through my head. I don't care about it, what any of you are doing in your life. So please, let me live my own. Thank you. What is going on? What's so wrong with us being together? They're from Erin, you know. I've heard a lot about how they do things differently there. Maybe they should just go back to Aaron with the rest of their lot. Hey, now, there's no need to be insensitive. So this is what they think. I see Liz standing a bit outside of the crowd. She has a concerned look passed on her face and I see her stare into my eyes. I watch her mouth with some words in my direction, but I can't understand what she's saying. I don't see Rain or Kadaj anywhere inside. The music hasn't started playing yet. The room becomes a cascading pit that threatens to swallow me. I would just leave. I look up at Lyle and see him glancing around nervously. He looks down at me with fear in his eyes. Kitska. I'm so sorry. Uh, I didn't know what to say or do. I tried to. He chucks in his words. He's rubbing his paws together in a nervous way. I'm sorry. I can't believe this. I want to leave. All right. He puts his arm around me and starts to lead me towards the stairs. Alone, please. But I want to explain. Lyle, please. We'll talk later. I say this in a hushed whisper. I just don't feel like being around anyone right now. I break away from his arms and begin to walk towards the stairs. Everyone I walk past is completely silent. Every single eye is on me. I hate it. I feel climbing a few steps, I turn around and dress the people in the room. Two of the shams smile at me through their few teeth. I was feeling like there was, like there was a large bowl in my throat. Only to have your good opinion crushed by something so, so trivial. Enjoy yourselves. There is a dreadful silence that falls over the rest of the ballroom. I look down and see Lyle standing at the base of the steps. He looks concerned and confused, but for a moment I think I can see a flicker of admiration on his face. It's like he's happy I'm standing up for myself. Well, I wouldn't have even done that. Uh, it's difficult to change people's opinions with just saying something like probably won't matter, matter much, but I thought this was a party. There's even more signs before the music resumes. I trudge my way up the stairs and go through the main hall doors. I may be slightly drunk, but it's nothing compared to how drunk I feel from telling everyone off like that. Power fades though in as everything settles in. I can't believe this. Sorry, I can't believe I've this. Sorry. Is there a problem with interspecies relationships in Liar? Now that I really think about it, I've never seen one here before. 
I look back on all the times I've seen a couple and I realize that they will all be in the same species. I guess I never really questioned it because it didn't stand out much. Why though? Why is it such a problem? It happens all the time in Erin. I've had my fair share of experiences with several different species. Lucky you. And I know so many people who are with different species. Some of them are even married. They can't have kids, but that's not what it's about. Fuck kids. I walk through the halls and run my hand along the wall. Anytime I come across a picture frame, I twist the bottom of the frame with my fingers. I think back to the look on Lyle's face when he, we had stopped dancing. I think about how he looked that whole time. Every facial expression blends into one. Confliction. I must have put him in a pretty uncomfortable position being so forward like that. I think about the way he looked so nervous and scared. All this time I thought he was just shy. My pace slows in, I feel my eyes start to water. Fuck all of them. That was so embarrassing. I would never want to see another noble's face again. With stuck up at attitudes and pride. I'm just going to do my job and focus on what matters. Kitska! Eliel call me name. Eliel call me name! <laughs> Don't call me name! Down the halls. The echoes across the walls of the corridor. His voice gives me the sense he's worried, but I really don't want to be seen like this right now. I can't even remember the last time I cried. I run further down the hall and reach a dead end. There's a door off to my left that I recognize. This is the tunnel that leads to the village. Kitsuka, I know you said you want to talk about it later, but... Please, I'm really sorry. I run into the tunnel and quietly close the door behind me. It's extremely dark in here. I'm not even able to see silhouettes. Not to mention, since this night I can't even see the light up ahead. I feel my way around and find the wall of the tunnel. It's really cold. After steadying myself, I start to move forward, touching the wall and being careful not to trip. What are you doing? The noise of water drops hitting the floor is almost therapeutic. I step into a pile of water and for a moment I think that I can see light. To test it, I take a step again and this water is starting to glow. What the hell? I bend down and touch the water in my bare fingers. It's warm. No swirls of glowing water show in neither area around me. What the hell is going on here? I've heard of water doing this before, but isn't that in the ocean? What's it doing down here? I take another step and use the light to guide my way through the tunnel. This only works for a few feet though, because the power is only so big. I steady myself on the wall again and work my way towards the exit. Turning my how long it's been, I should be getting close. I don't even know why I'm still walking anymore. I've stopped crying and I really want to go back inside. The air in here is freezing and if I remember correctly, the trap door at the end is locked. I'm too far in over my head now, so I just keep going. I'm completely sure that if I somehow get lost, Lyle will sniff me out. He was already hot on my, on my trail after I had left the party. Suddenly, I trip over a dip in the terrain and fall onto a set of wooden steps. I managed to catch myself with my hands on the side from the initial shock. I'm not hurt. I look up and I can see the faintest light breaking through the crack in the trap door. Climbing the steps slowly, I reach up and press my hand to the bottom of the door. The wood is cold and dusty. It opens. Did Lyle forget to lock it? No. I swear I remember him locking this. He wouldn't forget. Dust falls off the door as I lift it up. The first thing I see is snow falling gracefully from the night sky. It's much warmer up here. Everyone's candles and torches are lit, so I assume they're inside of their homes. There are a few people walking down the streets, but the village square isn't nearly as crowded as it was two days ago. I look up and see the lanterns burning with a fatality fire. The area around them is almost completely devo devoid of snow. 
As it falls from the sky and hits the ground, the snowflakes dissipate and melt onto the gulp cobblestone. I find a warm spot in the alley and sit down. I bring my knees up to my chin and wrap my arms around my legs. Lower half of my face buried in my scarf, but I can still see snowflakes fall into the black sleeves of my suit and melt. At this point I don't really have any thoughts. I just feel like falling asleep here. I'm also waiting for that trap door to open at any moment and for Lyle to come crawling through. I regret leaving him at the party. This whole situation just makes me feel so stupid. I don't know what's right or wrong anymore. I feel like I'm at fault, but I also wish someone would have warned me. I don't know, I feel so stupid right now. Everyone's always telling me how clever I am, but sometimes I feel like it's on accident. After sitting on the ground for a few moments, I hear distant mumbling. A slow and quiet voice that sounds sad is coming from the fountain. I shuffle closer to the corner of the building I'm leaning against and lean around it. It's Adarus. The hell is he doing here? Is that why the door was unlocked? He's sitting at the fountain looking up, up at the statue of his mother. I can see him mumbling to himself, rubbing the rim of the fountain with his ungloved hand. The water around the fountain is glowing a bright blue. I'm starting to think that the spring water here has some sort of luminescent quality to it. I watch him continue to talk to the statue, almost as, as if it was actually her. It reminds me of when people pray to their gods. I don't think that's the same. I mean, mourning and praying to a god is not the same thing. I just sit down at the altar and talk to it as if it's some sort of vessel that it can use to communicate with the being. This is different, though. This isn't his god, though. It's his mother. I look for a bit longer before I realize that I probably shouldn't have seen this. Especially lurking in an alley. I got jump scared by that. I hear the trap door open at the end of the alley and turn to see Lyle poke his head out of the entrance. He has a blanket in his arm. There you are. He closes the door softly, softly and wakes up to me. Are you okay? No, not really. I'll be fine though. Are you going to be okay? Yes. After you left, I didn't want to be there. Everyone kept looking at me and a few people actually questioned me about it. I'm sorry for leaving you there. I just really didn't want to be around anyone after that. I don't know how to feel, but everything just seems so confusing. I really do like you though. I see a small glimmer of a smile on his face. It's, got, it's fine. I know. He takes the blanket and wraps it around my shoulders. Where do you, though? You never answered. Let's go back to the castle. Even with the vitality nine turns, it's too cold out here. Okay. He leads me to the tunnel and I look back towards the direction of the fountain. Adrius is probably still sitting there. Something wrong? No. I just have a lot in my mind. He opens the door to the tunnel and leads me down the stairs. Yes. Me too. He lowers the door and closes with a resounding thud. I can hear him locking the door and then a few seconds later, he gently takes my hand in his paw. After le leaving the tunnel, we walk down the corridors for a bit. Ugh. What is it? You're going to have to pass by the ballroom to get back to my room, right? Oh, yes. You could. Hmm. What? Go to my bed chambers for a bit. It's not far from here and we won't run into anyone. Sure. But only if you want to. It sounds nice. I have a really nice fireplace in my room, too. Servants have probably already lit it, so it should be nice and warm. So if you're okay with it, it's this way. Lyle! Yes? I said it was fine. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Sorry, I get carried away sometimes. I feel like it's... <sighs> I really hope it's not going to draw even more issues. And people are going to be like, Oh, you slept in the, in the bed chambers of Lyle. I mean, he didn't say anything about me sleeping there, but... 
I assume that could be the case. Hey, it's fine. I'm not bothered by it. Takes my hand and leads me down the hallway I think I've been down before. Can't believe I haven't seen his room yet. It should be a good place to talk about what's happened. Rev at the door and he fumbles with his keys. Sorry. He finds the right key and unlocks the door. Warm air rushes into my face as he holds the door open for me. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So, let me check a bit. Okay, nice fireplace. Very nice bed. Uh, some candles, a sword, and... Okay, there's a drawing of a map. A drawing of a paw, I believe. And... That's him. In the far right. My senses immediately get overrun by the color red. He steps past me as I stand by the doorway and walks over to his bedside table. Lots of red. Oh, yes. I love red. It's my favorite color. Really? Of course. I like it because it's warm and vibrant. It's also just nice to look at. I watch him fumble with some things in his dresser and take this moment to look around. The fireplace is really nice and I can feel the warmth of the fire wrapping up around my legs. Above the mantle is a big painting. Sorry. Um, sorry. About that. It's the anime portrait for Wolf Warrior sh shrouded in the hood. Really? <laughs> okay. If you, if you say so, I'm, I'm a trust you on this one. It looks a bit like Lyle, but his fur is more of a reddish color. Smokes fly up around this figure and the painting almost looks menacing. I turn my gaze down and there's a brush sitting on the mantle. There's a few long hairs sticking out of it. I guess it's what Lyle uses to tame that mane of his. Put down the brush and explore the other side of the room. Lyle seems pretty occupied right now. Seem throwing a bunch of stuff into a drawer. I didn't notice until I got closer, but his bed is massive. It's probably normal size for him, but to me it's huge. So is everything. The fact that his canopy bed doesn't help. Pretty sure this room and everything in it was built for a larger animals. I look over to Lyle and see what's behind him. Are those your drawings? Um, yeah. It just sketches, though. I think really great to look at. I lean around and take a look at some of the drawings. Oh, wow. Oh, these are really good. Eh <laughs> Thanks. Okay. He steps to the side and walk up to the wall where his drawings are. Each one is an intricate sketch. Paws, flowers, there's even drawing of a mountain landscape. Closer to the bottom is a self-portrait. I can imagine Lyle sitting in front of a mirror and drawing himself. I don't think I could do that. I've never been that artistically inclined. Neither have I. <laughs> He's smiling the portrait and looks really cute. On the table is a couple of sketchbooks. Some coins and a dagger stuck into a spot where I can see he stabbed it multiple times. I think back to people in brothels throwing their knives into the bar counter out of boredom. There's also some lit candles that aren't even candle holders. A rock spills out onto the top of the dresser and dries up. I guess it's a bit of a slob. The one part of it that stands out the most though is a large piece of parchment. There's a muff tigrin drawn on it. It's extremely detailed right down to every village. Oh, don't read that. You may like my drawings, but my handwriting is not pretty. Handwriting is very good, don't put yourself down. Okay, so what do we have here? Okay, Aaron. There's a liar. That's, that's us. Hey, cool. Um, and dress. Okay. Aaron's nice, but what what's what are the all the crosses supposed to represent? The places where he went to and liked. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows. 
Hmm. There's a bunch of red marks in different parts of the map. What are those for? Point to one of the marks. Oh, those. Those are, um... Those are all the places I want to go. Oh, I was close enough. Like the other two kingdoms in the nearest clearing. I also really want to go there. What's the place on the map that's just above Aaron? I've heard that this river is beautiful during the summer. I've been there before. The Lord Span is a beautiful river. River. I didn't get to see much of it though, but from what I saw it's nice. He guides his finger down to an island off the coast of Dress. Have you ever been here? I take a closer look, but I instantly know what he's looking at. A parched labyrinth? No, I can't say I have. Like you, I've only been to places near or just outside of Aaron. Although I've heard it's very dangerous there. Pretty sure it's an almost un uninhabitable jungle. I want to go there someday, just to see it. Maybe one day your duties will take you there. You never know. He stares at the map with a dreamy look in his eyes. I hope so. I look at the other spots that he's marking and one stands out to me. Lover's Lake? Huh? Oh, yes. I want to see that lake eventually. What's it about? Because it's shaped like a heart. That's gay. He looks down at the ground and sits on the bed letting out a big sigh. I'm sorry for earlier. Lyle, I said you don't have to apologize. No, I do. I shouldn't have even pride. I didn't know that people would be listening. That was a conversation that we should have had here. It's me, I should be apologizing. I shouldn't have been so, you know. But I swear I had no idea about the stigma of interspecies relationships. I believe you. But yes, interspecies relationships are a big taboo and liar. Most of the general public finds it a bit weird. In some cases it's acceptable, but a human and a wolf? Forget it, it would be the laughing stock of the entire kingdom. Wow. I had no idea it was like that. Word of flyer doesn't spread much outside of the ki outside the kingdoms, and it's definitely nothing like that in Aaron. Really? Of course. It's completely normal. Even with the large human population, people still fall in love with other species. No kidding. Why would I? Falls back into onto his bed and sighs. I have to get out of this kingdom. Speaking of kingdom, what about the party? Shouldn't you be go shouldn't you be doing your job there? Not that I'm jo enjoying the company. Still swishes between his legs, rubbing up against the bed sheets. Nah, I got someone to cover for me. It's fine. For just a moment, all that can be heard is the fireplace. The crackling of the logs and the dancing of the flames. You know. You never did answer my question. Hmm? Yes, Lyle, I want to know. sits up in his bed and we're now eye level. What were you hoping I would respond with? Oh. It's okay. You probably already know how I feel about you. It's painfully obvious. If you're roughly tired as these next words come out. I don't care what anybody thinks. I only care about what you think. Because as far as I'm concerned, you're the only person I genuinely care about. I love you, Lyle. Everything about you. His eyes wait and I can feel myself getting nervous. I taste heads the back of my throat that usually happens when I'm on an, ad an adrenaline rush, or when I'm scared. I wouldn't have made it through this past month without you. And damn everyone in this castle and their prejudice. My hands are fidgeting and I can catch myself intertwining my fingers together. My legs are shaking and I feel like I'm about to vomit. If you don't want to be together because of what people may think, I understand. I could care less about my reputation, but I wouldn't want to damage yours. If that's the way it has to be, then I can see him smiling. Oh. The sound, 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 sound. <laughs> please, you... <laughs> your sound mixing, please. <laughs> Before I know it, our lips have met and he's passionately kissing me. 
My heart skips a beat and I freeze up. His lips are warm and press into mine firmly. I kiss him back and soon we're lustfully embracing each other. I exhale out of my nose and wrap my arms around him. I'm now sitting on top of him as he leans back further onto the bed. His tongue slowly works its way past my lips and I succumb to his desires. There's no holding back as we explore each other. I can feel sharp teeth on my mouth and it feels weird, but good. His slightly wet nose presses against mine and I feel a hot puff of hot breath on my face. We both open our eyes and pull back to take a breath. A breath. Sorry. A breath. A breath. Envelopes me in a tight hug and pulls me down onto the bed. Okay. His warm embrace feels too good as I hug him back. I lose myself in his warmth. I'm grinning ear to ear, ear to ear, and I feel myself lost in passionate thoughts. The sound of his tail rapidly thumping against the bed is pure bliss. Tightens his grip and kisses me on the forehead. I love you, Kitsuka. It was the best thing that's ever happened to me. I feel the exact same way. I'll roll over on top of him and give him another kiss. It's not as long as the one before, but he enjoys it just as much. Just as much as we are as well. Oh, what is it? Someone's excited. Okay. This game compared to Dawn Chorus uh, it doesn't have a, an NSFW filter, so I might have to censor things again. <laughs> he nods down to my groin and I finally resemble his fully erect, tinted, and somewhat jabbing him into, in the stomach. He smirks at me with bedroom eyes and I get a bit fostered. <laughs> I guess you're just a really good kisser. I am. He still wags more thumping against the bed. Okay. I move my hand down to his um, crotch and slowly rub his bulge. It's big, just like I remember it being. He's not uh, erect like me, but it's getting there. He's not. Yeah, he's not standing. I'm not either, but that's fine. So that elicits a slight whimper for a moment. I also ex expected a moan. Something wrong? It's just. I think I've forgotten what happened in the baths that one time. It's causing him to turn completely red in the face. It's not like that. I, I was just taking a bath. Do you don't you want to give me another show? He lets out a quiet nose of embarrassment before answering. Yes. I almost want to be mean and end this uh, end this year, but I'm not going to do that. After that, I take off his jacket and shirt. His, his large muscular chest is now fully visible. His spectral is thick and makes him look powerful. He helps me a little bit by taking off his gloves and then we get to his pants. I get down on my knees as he sits on the bed and I start to undo his belt. I rub my hand over his furry lower stomach as I pull his belt out for its loops. A white grin appears in his face and he even starts to kick his leg a little bit. Gripping both sides of his trousers and his underwear, I begin to pull them down. That's just for research purposes, of course. Uh, his um, wand almost flops out and rests between his thick th thighs. His large furry um, footballs also lay between his legs on the bed. Wow! <laughs> I've never seen such big balls. Eh. <laughs> Are you okay with them? Lyle, you're gorgeous. Still's now thumping loudly against the ma matrix. Thank you. I've moved my hand on his thigh and cup his uh, soccer balls before moving up to his wand. It's warm and girthy. Yep, <laughs> it's very, very nice. That's why he jumps a bit up. Epic Games, fuck you. You're ruining the moment for me. His body jumps a bit in my touch, so I go a bit slower. I lean in and rub my face up against his uh, magic wand, uh, feeling it twitch at just a slight, bit, light, slight, uh, <coughs> slightest bit of pressure. I look up and see him rubbing one of his nipples. You're really pent up, huh? 
Eh, <laughs> only a little. I haven't done this in a long time. That's okay. I'll go at whatever pace you want. Yeah, his, uh, his magic wand just got uh, suddenly very uh, erect. Yeah, it's just his magic wand is now fully erect in my hands. He says a little over seven inches and it's probably one of the thickest wands I've ever seen. <laughs> Nothing I can't handle with a little getting used to, though. His wand is already throbbing and leaking a, a bit. What a, what a what a mean wand! I lean in and lick the side of, of the, the wand, uh, the top of the wand, uh, the by rubbing my face against his his coin slowly. It smells clean, just like he. Bathe. There's a hint of a manly smell that sends my senses sky high. My hands move to his soccer balls as I play with them lightly. I could feel myself leaking in my pants. I realize I'm really pent up too, or I, I really want to pee. I lean in and place my mouth on the tip, licking as I move my lips around the top of the wand. He has his paw in my hand and I can feel him thrust into me slightly. He's still swishing side to side and when I look up I can see him biting his lip with his head back. He lays down onto his back and I reach up and grab one of his pecs. I give him a good rub down and tease his nipple, which makes him arc his back a little. Kitska? He sits up and removes his paw from my head. I stop sucking and pull away from his sick. Yeah? I want to see you. See me what? No, I mean... I want to see you. Oh, can I... He goes on, bunch of my coat, and a chill runs down my spine. If those big paws run up and down my body, it takes off my clothes. Ah, it's getting hot. It was already hot. <laughs> but the atmosphere here... I'm shirtless at this point, and he starts to go up and down. I chose to he kisses on the bare skin. He leans back and buttons my pants along my uh, sock to come out. It's still completely hard and leaking a lot. It's it's a very wet sock. He pulls my pants down and I step out of them, throwing them into the small pile of clothes we made. I watch him look me up and down. His gaze falling on me like this makes me a bit shy. I spread my arms out to the side as, as if to show off my body. I'm not as big as you, but it's good. You're beautiful. I can feel my cheek my cheeks flush a deep red after he says this. I watch him reach for and run his paw over one of my, my scars. Whoa. How do you get these? Oh. It's nothing important. He chuckles. What? I guess you're just as scruffy as me. He runs his finger over his scar. Haha. <laughs> he stands up and we both fall into a soft embrace. Paws run up and down my back as he gently caresses me. I rub my hands off throughout his soft mane and practically bury my face into his neck fluff. Our socks rub up against each other's bodies and it makes me feel pure bliss. <laughs> I reach around and grab a good bit of his sass. He's got a ni nice sass. He's very sassy. It's causing him to jump a bit, but he quickly warms up to it. Mel steps back and takes me by the hands, leading me to the bed. He throws back the curtains a bit and pushes me onto the bed. I fall back lightly onto the large matrix and bounce around for a second. Such figure looms over me like a shadow. This is perfect. Once again, the music, it's... <sighs> like, th I don't have any issues with the music in itself. Because I think it's really nice music. Uh, also, the ball music was pretty good, too. But the sound mixing is, like, so over the place. You got music that, or sound effects that are, like, super loud. 
and then you get musics that are super low. <laughs> It's, it's not the first time this happened in this game. And while I enjoy the game, it's a bit frustrating for someone recording a video. Because <laughs> now the, the sound was like super low compared to the, like the fire, which was crackling. Riles on his paws and knees looking into my eyes, smirking with a mis mischievous grin on his face. He leans forward and plants another long kiss on my lips before pulling me back and looking down at my sock. Behind, me, behind him I can see his tail wagging back and forth really fast. He bends down and starts to suck on my uh, sick. His mouth feels amazing around my sock and as he licks it up and down. At one point he even grasps his paw around it while he sucks and takes my soccer balls in, in his other paw. I arc my back and lean back onto the bed in pure ecstasy. He's a really good soccer player. I then release my sock from his mouth with a gasp. It's good. Yeah. This is through pleasurable grunts. I want you inside of me. I quickly sit up from the bed. Huh? I'm completely capable of taking you. I mean, we don't have to if you would rather me. Hey, Lyle. He looks up at me. I'm fine with doing whatever you want. You get to choose. Really? Of course. He quickly crawls around on the bed and posi positions himself behind me. Phyllis paws on my shoulders as he lays down me down onto the bed. My head is now at the end of the bed. I watch him clumsily lean over towards his dresser and pull a jar out from the top drawer. He hands it to me and I open the lid. Exactly what I thought it was. Tries for a little lubricant with a few small finger marks that have run through it. Mm-hmm. See someone has used it quite a lot. It smells like flowers and other pleasant natural oils. I run my fingers through it and get a nice amount. At this point he's already straddled me. He's being careful to not put his full weight on my body. I feel his sass rubbing up against my sock and I'm convinced it would be enough to make me climax. But I hold myself back. At that moment, he spreads, he spreads his cheeks and looks away bashfully. Mm, I can do that too. Like, reaching around, I rub the outside of his hole with my fingers. A little bit cold, but it soon warms up. After massaging, massaging the outside of his hole with my fingers, I slowly start to uh, infil infiltrate him. His hole is a bit tight, but not tight enough to make this too difficult. The lubricant helps too. After an infiltrate, infil <laughs> I should have I should have chosen a, an easier word. Infiltrating him in my fingers for a few more moments. I rub the rest of it on my sock. Ready, please. Okay. Really nice. I enter him slowly, which causes him to uh, moan with joy. <laughs> I guess that's I can say that. I let him moan too because it feels fantastic. He begins gyrating on my hips, soft thighs squeezing my torso with his sass rubbing as my coin. I place one of my hands on his sides and I grab his soccer balls with the other. I can tell the access because his eyes stare into mine with absolute lust. I feel myself getting close. He grasps his sick in his right paw and starts to rub himself. That's, that's a bit sick. Drops of a uh, Priya uh, scum drip onto my chest as he strokes his sock. I'm getting close. His whole tie is around my sick and I can't hold it in, in anymore. I grip his sides and arc my back. A lot more escapes my mouth as I climax, climax uh, inside of him. He moans too, riding my sick a bit faster. I'm close too. He's pushing as hard as I can onto, onto my saga and moving his hips up and down. I reach up and rub his nipples and peck as he pumps his sick faster, squinting his eyes. Finally, he uh, escapes. 
uh, and pumps out a large amount of uh, scum. Most of it shoots onto my chest and some of it flings onto his thigh. After a few moments, I pull out of him and he leans over my body, both of us panting. I love you, Kitsuka. Just in case I, just in case I don't think I, I will show that. He's smiling at me with a grin that always makes me hard skip a bit, skip a beat. I love you too, Lyle. And uh, I think with that tender moment, I will be ending the episode here. And oh, wow, <laughs> that's a big episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to leave a like and uh, to subscribe to the channel. I'll also drop a comment to say if you're enjoying the series. And yeah, I'll be seeing you guys uh, next time.